The next section is about what causes valley winds. Now there is a myth that valley winds are uh, only caused by thermals leaving the ground and drawing in air around them. This is uh, just part of what's happening as the volume of air drawn in on strong days is incomprehensibly high. This is not possible with just thermal development as the wind persists long after the sun has gone down. So there must be something else happening and I'm going to attempt to explain this uh, somewhat complex phenomenon in this next section. So this is a satellite picture showing a sunny day in late spring over Europe and if you check out the synoptic for this day it looks like a classic example of an excellent cross country day over the Alps. There is a very light northwest wind in the high level and if you look to the east you'll see that a uh, cold front has passed through recently. This has left the air mass behind relatively unstable. As the sun starts to warm the ground over Europe, the first thermals start to form. Uh, this happens pretty much everywhere, but the strongest activity is over the Alps and the Iberian Peninsula. As the heating gets stronger throughout the day, something very interesting is happening to the air pressure over these areas. Uh, without going into the finer dynamics, I'll try and keep it simple. Basically the air over these areas is heated and expands. So as it expands the pressure drops creating what are called heat lows. Uh, these lows are not to be confused with low pressure systems but they do rotate an air mass the same way and draw air in towards its centre. As this low draws the air in from the plains around the Alps it causes a low level wind which uh, depending on what side of the Alps you're on will determine the direction of this flow. The air is running towards the center, so if you're on the northeast side of the Alps, then the main flow will be from the northeast. And depending on the valley layout, then this will uh, control the direction. This wind can be between around 500 to 1200 meters thick, depending on the time of year and location, and uh, can sometimes exceed 40 kilometers an hour in some parts of the Alps. This picture shows the main entry points around the Alps. As the valley flows are low level winds, they cannot go through mountains, so need large wide open valleys in which to feed the heat low as it sucks in the air around it. The next few pictures just show simply what is happening locally in the Inn and uh, Zilla valleys. So how do we as paraglider pilots work out which way the valley wind will be moving? Notice I didn't use the word blowing as uh, valley wind is being drawn and not blown. Well, it's uh, moving towards the center of the Alps and towards the bigger mountains. You can say that most of the time it will, will be moving in the uh, opposite direction to the river flow or simply uphill. In the next part, I'll explain what it means for pilots who find themselves low in a valley flow and how to identify safe places to soar up and uh, nasty turbulent lee sides to avoid.